Got a tire, 16 inch on the back of this CRF. 150F that we gotta change. Let me zoom you guys in here. Uh, 14 millimeter on deep well. That we're gonna need to take off the, the rear brake rod. Don't lose, don't lose these little pieces. And then the axle nut is a 24 millimeter, but I use a 15, 16. On the other side, 17 millimeter wrench on the other side. Time to check your brake pads. Make sure you got some life left on those. It's actually it's Easter Sunday today. Better make sure you guys can make sure you guys can see what we're working on here. Uh, you're gonna need a 12 millimeter. Remove the um, the bead lock. This, you know, this is what keeps the tire from spinning on the rim when you get a flat tire. You get stuck down in the bottom of the canyon, and your tire goes flat and starts spinning on the rim, you're never going to get out of there. Gotta have a bead lock. This is a core removal tool. Take this, the, the valve stem out, the valve core out. Not sure what you call it, I think valve stem. Yeah, this is a buddy of mine's bike. His son was on a KX65, 60, I'm not sure. But he's ready. We're ready for a bigger bike. It's time to put, you gotta push this, you know, this down into the groove of the rim. You're gonna get it out of here. Don't forget to go over and check out Dirt Bike TV One on Instagram. He changes these tires so fast and so effortlessly. sweet spot here. I think I've talked about this before, but you come out here too far, you can't get the tire iron in and too close. Oh, what about that far? And the tire iron will just go in a lot. Well, it's supposed to go in easier. So when you're changing your tires, try to, try a different area, you know. Out a little bit further, in a little bit further till you find the sweet spot. Tire iron is going a lot easier. Ooh, some slime in that too. Now, Jay over there at Dirt Bike TV has a stand that looks like it works really well. I really need to spend some time. Does one of those. This is your bead lock. Just goes in and clamps the bead down to the down to the rim. I'm gonna position you guys here. Give you a different view. 
Oh, five minutes. I'm halfway through already. I gotta get going. This is gonna be another one of those non-edited videos. So you guys are stuck with me while I work. You know, just a little bit of air in there. This is a Tusk. A Tusk EMEX. I haven't tried one of these tires before. It looks pretty sweet. Maybe I'll put one of these on my wife's. My wife's 150. You got a little bit of baby powder in there. Um, helps with chafing. It helps with moisture. Man, I think we're already six minutes in. It might be a little longer than 10 minutes. I better pick up my game. No mistakes. Pick up my pace. I took the valve stem through and just put the nut on here. Just a tiny bit. Just to hold it in place there. While you do this, you work here. Oh, forgot to put my tire soap on. Me. This gonna cost me a little bit of time here. This is just a what is this? This is true flight, true flight tire mount stuff. I think I got it on Amazon. It's pretty good. It seems to work pretty well. I haven't really tried a lot of different products. Don't really know what. Don't have anything to compare it to. You know, I don't think you have to worry about pinching the tube too much at this point. The leverage just kind of going the right direction. Once you're putting the second one on, the second bead on, then you got to pay attention to pinches. This one's a fighter. So flip it over, and you got to walk it over the walk it over the bead the bead lock. Yeah, I like it too. And make sure it gets up in there. Yeah, see, that feels good. There we go. Oh, yeah. and check the tube. Sometimes the tube can get folded over an extra time. You want to just make sure there's no rubber on the bead. Now I have one of these little bead buddies. And these are pretty handy. Start about I start about 90 degrees away from the from the stem and the beadlock. I better check my camera work. My cameraman's over here slacking. <laughs> Yeah, just you know, take easy, easy little bites. This is where you gotta worry about pinching the tube. 
you know, push it in there and just make sure this feels like it's on metal as it goes over the rim. If that tube's underneath there, then you're going to be doing it all over again. Over and over. Especially when you're out on the trail and you're tired and dirt everywhere and you just want to get it done. It's hard to make yourself slow down. Push that, push that rim lock up in there so as you come over. It's getting tight. Maybe I put a little too much air in the tube. You know, you don't need much, just a little bit. Keep it out. This is where you scratch your rim if you're not careful. lost my cool there. Got time to keep up with, you know. Now the stems giving me trouble. Everything was going so well. When you pump it up, you gotta make sure the bead pops out. See right here, the bead's out when it drops in here. Make sure the bead, you know, don't fill up the tire too much. Don't blow yourself up. at a bit of an angle. So I'm going to put the nut on it. I'm going to tighten the nut down. Not, not overly tight, but... And then I'm going to let the air out. And the, the tube will kind of recenter itself. Valve core back out. The glove didn't make it all the way through, did it? And you can see, start taking that nut pressure off of there. Even with the nut coming off of there, it still stays straight.
good time to clean off the axle. Keep an eye out for any dirt. Get those threads nice and clean. Got all fresh grease and careful on this side. You don't want the grease getting on your brake pads. fresh grease down in there on these seals you know the, the the wheel bearing seals on these spacers so get as much dirt off as you can a little fresh grease on there a little bit of grease goes a long way in keeping water out of the wheel bearings change on the outside of the swing arm when you put the axle through or else if the chain's hanging down between the tire and the swing arm then you'll have to take it all off again to get the back of the chain on. Easy. Easy. You know this chain I'm gonna replace that chain. That one's pretty worn out. Now you come look over here, it'll tell you one inch of free play. So you're gonna set the set the tension cam, the chain adjuster cam. See so about an inch. Now I'm at number 23 on this side. Well it's too tight, it's gotta go down. Try 15. I'll do this. Try 20. That's pretty good. Okay. It's looking pretty good. And last thing over here, put this brake rod back together. And I bet you could make a little sharpie mark on this brake rod before you take it apart to tell you right where to go. That'd be, that'd be a real pro tip. Uh -oh. Okay, right, that feels pretty good. I'll take it for a test ride and make sure. Well, thanks for joining me. I think I like these Tusk tires. The price is right, that's for sure. They sure look mean. Oh my goodness, forgot to tighten up the bead, uh, the bead lock. Jeez. You guys might want to take these, take these videos for what they're worth. You're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna double check my work.
Just make sure I don't forget something like that. That's pretty, that's pretty bad. All right, well, that's it. Brake works, tires on. <laughs> now go out there and change your tires. Good luck.